Warning, this podcast has stories of real-life events and true crime that happens every day. These stories may contain adult language and graphic or disturbing details not suitable for everyone. Listener discretion is advised. In our society, most people are content to go through their daily lives safely and peacefully. But our society is not always safe or peaceful. For that reason... Some men and women answer a higher calling to defend and protect their fellow man. You probably know someone who is one of these people, or maybe you are one of these people. The ones who see and do the things most people would never want to. These things are sometimes heroic and beautiful, but often they are horrific and terrifying. It's these things they don't share about with other people. It's these things they carry with them, so you don't have to. But when they get together, they talk to each other about them. And they call these stories War Stories. Coming to you deep from behind enemy lines in occupied California. <laughs> this is about this as deep as you get right is, here. We have high ground, too. Yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, this is the War Stories official podcast. I'm Tom. And I'm John. And, uh, and I'm not. <laughs> and as you can hear, we have our good friend Elliot back. In fact, um, for the first time in a long time, we are uh, meeting at your place again. At the compound. At the compound. You have enough room <clears throat> for us to social distance and still. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and cover all four sides. <laughs> cover all four sides. <laughs> uh, we've, we've got uh, your wife in the in the turret. <laughs> yep. <laughs> We've got enough um, ammo for everybody. We didn't need to get in line yeah. with everybody else. We have yes. enough shit. Yeah. Yeah. We're ready to go. Yeah. So we are here in, in, deep inside occupied California where our constitutional rights have gone right out the freaking window. Mm-hmm. And uh, we are getting together and violating all sorts of, you know, Gavin Newsom's laws to bring you this podcast episode. Uh, and it's a very special episode because we have back with us Robert. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. And you, uh, you, you listeners may remember Robert uh, told us a story about a traffic stop in uh, the less than nice part of town that went to shit real fast. Um, but today you're with us because, uh, well, we like you, but also you are here via Skype because you're quarantined. Is that right? Well, I'm I'm quarantined for my family. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But uh, the the funny thing is, is uh. You know, uh, been just over a week ago, um, I worked a couple of shifts with a co-worker, and the, a few days later, he felt ill and has pneumonia, for sure, but uh, they couldn't confirm whether it was uh, the COVID-19 or not without doing the, the test, and that's not going to come back until sometime next week, you know. The oh, test takes that long, huh? Yeah, it takes like a week. Man, you know, they were so, telling us three days. When they gave uh, this, per- so they, uh, you know, he had to do the call of shame. You know, kind of like when you uh, come up with an STD and you get a call you the girls that you were with uh, previous, <laughs> let them know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so he had to call everybody that he's worked with and let them know what's going on, just so you know they have a heads up. And then, uh, so. I- I called work or actually work called me to let me know because I, I think I got like five phone calls from different people that day. And, uh, one of, one of my, uh, sergeants, I hit him up. I'm like, well, so am I supposed to come to work on Friday or what are we doing here? And he's like, well, even if his test comes back positive, um, the department doesn't, uh, let you quarantine until you actually start showing symptoms. I was like, how does that even make sense? You know, isn't it supposed to stop the spread <laughs> by, yeah. Thank you. Contact with somebody because by the time you start showing symptoms, you're already, you know, you've infected 10 people at that point. Right. So got that going for me. You know, I uh, actually worked uh, yesterday and the day before because, you know, there's no quarantine from my work anyway. And then, uh, but when I got the call in that day and found out uh, may have been exposed, uh, I was at home and I got uh, immediate family members that uh, have asthma, and so they're high risk for that. So I ended up bouncing. Luckily, uh, we've got a condo that we haven't rented out right now, and 
quarantine here in the meantime. So you're self quarantining basically is yeah, like, they, they from my family, you know, and, and I'm, of course I'm not going anywhere doing anything other than going to work or going to, you know, get, get groceries or whatever, you know? Yeah. So strange time, a strange yeah. time. It's amazing though. You know, at work, it's like how many people are out and about just screwing around. Like, you know, we see them hiking in the mountains and all kinds of stuff. It's like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, yeah. go. It seems like it, now I, I thought this would be interesting to, to talk about, but, uh, you know, John, you're out there on the front lines and Robert, you're out there on the front lines and what has it been like? Um, well, I, well, I guess there's two things going on. Number one, there are less people out and there are times where it's just, it's kind of eerie and it's like a ghost town and you're like, wow, it's kind of interesting. There should be people. And now there's not. The other flip side is it makes it a little easier to do my job because usually people out at certain times of the night and now especially because of this whole, you know, stay at home order or you should stay at home order sort of thing, you know, the people that are out are up to no good. So it makes our job a little easier. We're still we're still busy and if I had to if I had to say anything the the um the crime rate has gone up since this. Really? Mhm. Have you noticed something similar, Robert? Um, I work, uh, in the non-control area right now, so I don't, uh, really have a finger on the pulse of that. But has your, has your daily activities changed as a result? I mean, are you finding but not much, <laughs> as you know, there's, there's still people out doing stupid stuff that I have to uh, take care of in the capacity I'm working in right now, but it's not uh, criminal, man. Well, I mean, I will say that, you know, as far as procedures and things go, I mean, it, I, you know, I think as long as you're doing things the safe way to do it in the beginning, I think you're all right. Um, I'm not going to say that the risk of exposure is not greater because of what we do, because it is just because we have to deal with people. But um, it was kind of interesting, you know, I, not that I wasn't taking this serious before, but, you know, we got briefed by fire last week. Um, and, uh, when they sat in and they basically told us that they weren't even intubating people anymore, I was really? like, what do you mean you're not intubating people anymore? They love to do that. Uh, they're like, nope, not anymore. If, if you not even bag them, no, it's just a literally, just a bag. literally, uh, I honestly, I don't think they have anything to do with the mouth, like anything with the breathing or anything no. coming out. And the way it was kind of described to us was, you know, they get, they, they show up on scene to these medical calls and they send one person in and just make sure no one's in full arrest. And if someone's in full arrest, it's just literally like a scoop and go. Wow. And that's it. Even with, uh, you know, dead body calls they, they don't even, they barely come in. They literally poke their head in and just be like, yep, he's dead <laughs> and they're out. So they're taking no risks supposedly on, and this is on our end. I don't know how it is everywhere else. That's crazy. It, which, and sorry, hold on, yeah. because we are one of the agencies that do uh, respond simultaneously to medical calls. Um, they have now given us the option to um, get involved or not. So if we get a medical, we are now allowed to stand at the door and wait for fire instead of start CPR. Wait, you guys then, get to stage and wait for fire? Yeah. Wait a minute. Then both of you stand at the door and go, you go, you go, you go, yeah, no, yeah, you yeah. go. Yeah. No, <laughs> Yeah, before it wasn't That's an option, awesome. and, and now it's an option. <clears throat> wow. Wow. And, yeah. uh, I mean, okay, so how much of this is panic, and how much of it is legit? I mean, I'm not a doctor, but um, I don't, you know, I, I think it's legit. Um, I do think it's legit. Do I think that it is, would it, would it, do I think there's panic too? Yeah, there, there's absolutely panic. I think that if you're predispositioned to, other medical issues. I mean, sure. It's going to affect you just like anything else would, but I don't think, uh, I think as long as you take care of yourself and you're taking the right precautions, I think you're all right. Yeah. I don't, I mean the business that I'm in now is, you know, like it, you, some, some people know, but, uh, it's been shut down because of this. So all I'm right. effectively sitting at home on a temporary vacation for right. the foreseeable future doing literally nothing. I'll tell you what though, the freaking vacations that they're the deals that are out right now, 
Yeah, right. <laughs> Legit. Yeah, no shit. Legit. Yeah. And you have like, there's some of the deals where you can literally buy, uh, you know, four day, five night stay wherever. And you don't even have to eat. It just gives you like 18 months to use it in. Right. So you could buy it cheap now and be like, mm, I'm going to wait till this thing blows over. Yeah. <laughs> Smart. I'm, my wife and I we should just plan our vacation now and take it. Oh, wait, I won't have any vacation time. <laughs> <laughs> Well, kidding. Uh, well, uh, again, welcome back, Robert. And uh, so far, you seem like you're not showing any symptoms yourself. No, everything's good so far. Hopefully, it stays that way. I don't yeah. even know if that day thing is actually a thing, you know, but that's the number they keep throwing around that, oh, you're, uh, you can be contagious or not showing symptoms, you know, up to 14 days. So I don't know if that's actually accurate or not or if that's a good measure. But And how many days are you in now from exposure? Uh, Today is day nine, I think, since the first uh, time I worked with the guy and possibly was exposed if he if he even has it, you know. It could be just a coincidence pneumonia. Yeah. Hmm. Well, we were just talking about this before we started recording. It, it. Everybody in the last two or three months has seemed to have some weird, you know, sickness. And everybody's, you know, you're looking back and going, man, I wonder if... That was me having mm-hmm. it and getting through it and being done with it because the numbers seem like they say it's a lot more contagious than you thought. And then we didn't know soon enough because, you know, communist China. Control. Right. I, I actually wonder if this to cer- a certain extent is going to be like a Chernobyl event for China where it's going to because they were already facing. Uh, yeah. Protests Econo- yeah. And, and economically, they were crumbling a little yeah, bit. They, yeah. They're having a hard time economically because they're fighting a the commander in chief, the real right president who, who, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. who has decided that he's not playing around. Um, yeah. so they're struggling a little bit economically and you know, you talk to, um, people around the Chernobyl incident and they'll tell you that that was a big, uh, a big hole that was caused in the, the Soviet empire. And it was a big reason why it, it collapsed. Well, you were already seeing, uh, we posted a meme. You were already seeing the uh, protests in Hong Kong, mm-hmm. uh, and then people freaked out because one of the g- doctors that blew the whistle on this mm-hmm. coronavirus got hauled in by the cops and told to STF, you know, you. Right. And all of a sudden he died. And all of a sudden he gets the coronavirus and he dies. Mm, that's awkward. Mm-hmm. Uh, uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so when this, I, I'd be interested to see what the fallout from China getting caught lying. And, I mean, let's face it, if a virus breaks out in Atlanta, where the CDC is, people are going to wonder if it was something that escaped sure. the CDC. Mm-hmm. Sure. Well, this is a virus that breaks out in Wuhan, where an, a laboratory, a level whatever laboratory that studies infectious diseases. Okay, maybe it wasn't deliberate, but at least somebody's going to ask the question, well, is it a coincidence that the virus started in the same city where you're, you know, just... and. I, are we going to trust that the the Chinese government's going to tell us the truth? Absolutely not. Mm-hmm. How do you know the Chinese government is lying? Their lips are moving. So, <laughs> well, it's just the news is touting that uh, we've surpassed China with the uh, number of corona cases because they're like eighty one thousand or something like that. But come on, really? Yeah, uh, no. You, we'll see. There, the truth that they're only at eighty one thousand. You know, yeah. I mean, I, I've kinds of craziness coming out of there that like. Um, their uh, government is forcing people to turn on all the uh, electricity in their businesses and stuff to show that uh, their business is open, you know, like kind of on paper, mm-hmm. you know, that kind of thing, because it, it, it shows that the, the, the amount of electricity used in the area shows that the businesses are open. They're trying to see everything is status quo now. And, you know, it's not. <laughs> wow. Well, this will be fun to look back at 10 years from now and see what the net effect was, but it ain't going to be good. And I'm, you know, you know, what is fun though? Watching all these people in line trying to buy guns and they're not hunting. Oh, that is awesome. This This is is awesome. awesome. Not not only that, but, but the, the amount of people going in and to gun stores and going, I'd like to use the uh, loophole laws Mm -hmm. and walk out with my ghost gun right now. Yeah. And you're like, uh, no. I'll this take is... the black one. Yes, that one's good. I'll yeah. take that one. Uh, you know, sir, the, me- <laughs> the media has been lying to you all these years, and uh, you do have to take a test and pass a background right. check. Welcome to reality. And, yeah, welcome right. to the 10-day right. waiting period. But wait a minute, and you're not a hunter. What do you need the gun for? You don't need a gun. Right. Right? <laughs> 
You're not a hunter. All of a sudden. You don't need a gun. <laughs> the real problem, the real unintended consequence of this is going to be when all of these uh, kids go back to school and the teachers realize that they were homeschooled by nothing but day drinking parents who couldn't go to work. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> Was uh, that when I saw it says uh, you're going to have a baby boom in nine months and then, you know, 13 years from now, we're going to call them quarantines. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> quarantines. That's pretty funny. You know, and back on the uh, and back on the gun thing, it's interesting to watch everything go back and forth with uh, this uh, sheriff here in L.A. County on uh, <laughs> on we're taking that we're shutting down the stores we're not shutting down the stores we're like who where did this ass clown come from yeah if you're not following the news in la county it was uh gun stores are not essential they're closed right no no gun stores are essential oh okay uh per the county sheriff the gun stores are open and then the county sheriff uh uh no you know what actually we're gonna close them again and then he and then i think the fine i think the final word was he was gonna leave it up to the chiefs chiefs of police oh he said that I believe the, I he might and, uh, in all of the cities that are patrolled by the uh, LA County Sheriff and all of the unincorporated areas, those gun stores will. And then all of the cities that are They'll not be closed department, it's up to their chief of police if they want to yeah. uh, do it. Uh, I was going to say, cause our chief was like, fuck that. All our, all our guys are open and, and they have been, they've been open for business. Well, I'm hoping that Pomona doesn't close down because I got two guns over there waiting for me to <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> well, you know, uh, my uh, old chief who retired, he opened a gun store. Hmm. And uh, it's it, uh, he was all over the local news where I used to work because he said, F you, I ain't closing. And uh, he says, the state of California says I'm an essential business and I don't care what the county sheriff says. <laughs> You know, he basically said, come and take them. <laughs> what did the governor say? I thought that the state... Because there are a lot of governors that said it's an essential business, shut the fuck up, move on. I don't know what our idiot said. I, I believe that on the list of essential businesses, that was included as... In California? In California. Yeah. That's what I, I'm pretty sure. So this wow. so this bozo can override the governor? <sighs> I mean, the governor. if the governor can override the Second Amendment, I guess... <laughs> Well, he didn't. No, I, I know. I'm just saying we're we're, we're if, gonna look it up right now. Yeah, look at that shit up. Right yeah, because Google um, that shit. It's 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 interesting that um, the rights that we're willing to kind of just it's the same thing with 9/11, right? We had the Patriot Act in 9/11. Yeah, and we were willing to give up a lot of freedoms. Sure. For what we thought was security, and now we're you know willing to do the same damn thing because people are panicky. I mean, let's face it, the the toilet paper thing must have started out as a joke somewhere, but somehow that joke turned into actual panic. It, it's a run on the bank, basically, mm -hmm. when you create an artificial panic and everybody goes to withdraw their money. Well, you somebody created an artificial panic and it's it's coronavirus it, it affects your respiratory system it's not chipotle don't buy toilet paper yeah i didn't i don't understand <laughs> to this day i don't understand that one that, the wars of 2020 yeah it's gonna be uh per uh newsom's um official list of essential businesses gun stores were not on that list oh so there you go at least he stays consistent okay well there you go yeah he's ask clown one ask clown two yeah i wonder if he has does the governor have armed people protecting him just curious no, no, no. They just have like, you know, batons. They, they tell everybody if you, you know, like, if well, you threaten the governor, you'll hurt his feelings, we'll and we need you to stop. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, welcome, welcome back to the show, they, bro. They, they face bubble, bubble around him is what he has. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. right. You know, when I actually we just were at work. I don't know. Something popped up on one of the TVs with him, and, and like he he legitimately looks like every bad guy in every early '90s movie. Oh my god, he does! Le <laughs> legitimately, I didn't, even, I didn't even realize that, but he does. Right? He looks like he looks like the bad guy in a Steven Seagal film. Yeah, hundred percent. I was yeah. thinking Van Damme, but yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, he's the slimy politician <laughs> in every early '90s action movie. <laughs> That's pretty good, about. actually. We well, should mention it. Absolutely true. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird. Actually. Well, uh, you know, it's uh, I, I the one that cracked me up was, and it were, it's not the governor, but somebody was talking about Elon Musk, and they mm. said it is too soon to tell if Elon Musk is a superhero or a supervillain. Mm. <laughs> He's either Batman or Lex Luthor, but I'm not sure <laughs> not which. Sure <laughs> well, I can see him being Lex Luthor. Um, one of, one of the, a friend of mine was talking about that. He was saying that uh, 
you know, here Elon, this genius, is trying to solve all these problems, you know, like the L.A. traffic. Hey, I built you some tunnels. And they're like, nope, shut that down. You know, it's like, how many times is this guy going to come up with something really awesome and they shut him down and he finally says, you know what, fuck you. Uh, I'm going to make a bunch of AI robots and take over the world. You, right. I mean, he, <laughs> he could start Skynet single-handedly and we'd have a Terminator right. situation right. real quick. So, I'm, I, you know, there's there. I didn't understand this, you know, when, when like you hear elderly people like my grandparents or my great grandparents, when I heard them talking about, you know, I'm ready to go. <laughs> I don't like where this world is going. I start, I'm starting to understand that mm-hmm. mentality more and more every day. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, yeah, there's, there comes a point where you go, I'm just glad I'm not going to be around to see it. I'm just disappointed because yeah. I thought the apocalypse was coming. Well, yeah, I was really hoping to just literally be cruising the streets with a shotgun out my window, just getting to blast it. Yeah, I, I was ready to be, like a, zombies be a warlord. And yeah. Yeah. This zombie apocalypse is off to a really slow start. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Milton in office space. Uh, I was told there would be zombies. <laughs> yeah. It was funny because we were all talking about it. Like, you know, everyone's like talking like, oh, you know, it'd be great. You know, people start turning to zombies. You know, it's going to be awesome. We're just going to have a field day. And I'm like, have you guys seen World War Z? Yeah. Those fuckers were fast. Well, okay. And I was like, dude, I'm not down for that shit. <laughs> so there's the for debate. The sake, Walking Dead zombies. Yes, I yeah. want Walking Dead zombies. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, you mean the ones that don't make any noise until they have to appear on camera? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's dead quiet in the house, and then all of a sudden, Rah! it's funny. I go to uh, I those go zombies to, have great noise discipline. After all this stuff started to happen, I go to Albertsons to get some stuff, and I'm like, all right, I'm, you know, people are gonna act like idiots. Yeah. Oh, okay, we're on now. Yeah. Right. No. Everybody's like nice, and everyone. Like, what's happening? Oh my <laughs> god! It is, like, is the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> like, what's happening? Everybody's yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. Nobody's having any issues here. I'm like, shit! This is like so disappointing. <laughs> I was. It's ready. all those. It's all those celebrities <laughs> tweeting out uh, themselves singing "Imagine" by John Lennon. That's what really did it. That's that's. I saw one thing that said, uh, uh, you know, forget forget the president daily briefing what does leonardo dicaprio and and george clooney think that's I swear they're they're gone we, we, we don't know what to do did you hear about that daily briefing i was reading uh yesterday uh yesterday or a day before yesterday that um certain news outlets now are not going to broadcast it because they don't think that it's information the public needs oh wow Wow. Yeah, isn't that interesting interesting strange mm. Mm. so i think it's msnbc cnn and a couple of other ones are not going to broadcast it. It's probably because he's calling him liars. and Well, it's because he's running the freaking show, and yeah. that does not look good. No. 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 They don't. So, they opt while, while they While well, they put Biden in, and that poor bastard, man. <laughs> the fuck's happening with him? <laughs> I actually feel bad for him. I really do. Because he doesn't even know what fucking day it is. Did you see? <laughs> Did you? <laughs> I mean, really, he doesn't. He doesn't know what day it is. He doesn't. He doesn't have the shit he says. No. You're like, what did he just? Say? Do you guys remember years ago? There was something. There was a. There was a, these two guys on. I think it was KFI, maybe that used to. It used to be. What did Jesse Jackson say? Oh yeah. Oh, you guys remember yeah, that? I do remember oh, that. Man. That was legit. Right. Okay. Well, this is like part two, because. He says like shit, and maybe you understand it, but then you really don't. After yeah. you just stare at him and go, "What the fuck did he just say? What, the, what, what did he just say? What did he really just well, say?" That? So it's pretty bad when you're making Bernie Sanders look like the sane one. Where is Bernie, by the way? Well, he's quarantining. He's he's old. Yeah, it's gonna kill him. I know, but he's how come he's not? But how come he's not on the air anywhere? Well, do, do you really? I mean, right. don't look a gift horse in the mouth. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I was telling you, I was joking around with everybody. I'm like, hey, you know, you go to the store and there's no bread and there's no toilet paper, and I go, well. Here's your Bernie Sanders dress rehearsal right here. Yeah. This is what it's going to be like yeah. if you vote for him and he gets to be president. Mm-hmm. Here's your here's your socialism right here. It's it's uh. it's it's an interesting time that we live in and you know this 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 episode and uh and our episode with the doctor is just really going to be kind of our thoughts on on this whole debacle I think. Yeah. But yeah. I went so yesterday I I got a taste of my old job uh because I went to uh, do a favor with a friend where that we were supposed to go pick up some photographs from a guy who's in hospice or he's in uh, uh, some sort of you know um, convalescent hospital, mm. and they said, "Oh, we've, we, he's got like photo albums that we need to salvage because they're going to you know f- forcibly move them out. So if you could help me go pick this stuff up, 
And uh, somebody goes, yeah, you know, he became a little bit of a hoarder. And I went, "Uh uh-oh. Oh, no. And my buddy goes, what? And I said, dude, if somebody's willing to use the word hoarder, we could have a problem. And we get there, and the I, it, it is literally an episode of Hoarders. It was like boxes from the floor to the ceiling, mm-hmm. lining everything, you, you know, yeah, one like pathway a one, through. One foot path one to walk through sideways. One foot to walk through. <laughs> food in the refrigerator that is growing legs oh, and yeah. trying to escape. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, fecal matter in the toilet. You know, I miss searching houses like that. I really do miss it. So I, I no. just, when, when they opened the door, I went, not. I went, I, I went, no, I'm not touching anything in here without a, a mask and gloves. Well, guess what? You can't get at the store. You can't get a mask and gloves. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of nope right there. So, and I, I looked at my buddy. I'm like, dude, I would not be surprised if you moved one box and found a dead animal. Oh, and I was thinking, you know, we've been so wrapped up in all of this, you know, the, the the coronavirus and stuff like that, but we still have, you know, everyday life going on. And this kind of thing is still just like first responders. Like you're talking about with the fire guys, not wanting to intubate people, not wanting to t- life still goes on. Mm-hmm. And, and we're allowing something that we don't really even know or understand and to panic us like sheep and freak us out and cause us to make these, drastic huge changes in our lives Mm -hmm. and i i kind of had this epiphany where i was like man it doesn't take much no it does not take much to take human beings and let them like it it almost feels like we we kind of want we we want to feel like we're free but we actually really do want somebody to tell us what to do all the time Mm -hmm. all the time I, I don't think anybody really wants freedom. If you think anarchy will work, just try driving on a road after they've paved it but not painted the lines back on, and you'll see that people can't handle That's like Europe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what? The, like, I'm curious to see what, like, um, like I know cities like, uh, like Santa Ana, they have an order not to do any proactive police work. Everybody is grounded, and you shall just respond to radio calls, and that's it. So I'm kind of curious, like how places like that are continuing to operate period, because like, yeah. you know, like us, that that's not going to happen. We have too small of a city for that to happen and it'll go to shit too quick. So I'm surprised places like that aren't blowing up already. And if they are I'm not hearing about it. Well, if businesses were still open, I think you would be seeing, you know, Koreans with AR 15s on the roofs of their businesses trying to protect it from looters. I'm surprised we haven't seen more looting and, and whatnot because there's it, people are freaking out and they're well at this end of town we've had that I know of three uh which which is pretty much unheard of out here we've had three follow home uh robberies you're kidding no mm-hmm. and one uh i think one female right one female was shot in her yeah, driveway she got shot in her driveway yeah so we've had three out here which is absolutely 100% unheard of yeah we're in a suburb of los angeles here and it's a pretty safe like you know, drunken, drunken DUI crashes and, and, and domestic violence and right. things like that are common, but right. not follow home robberies. No. Not, I mean, it's, it's interesting. Cause I, I, I don't know where we were talking about the other day when I, when I said, you know, something to the effect of, you know, running, you know, when we're running plates at work and 90 per, 95% of them are around either the city or, or in the city or around the city. And now it's kind of like a toss up. It's like 50, 50, we're getting friggin'. Hawthorne and Long Beach and Whittier and, and all these places where you're like, where are these people coming from all of a sudden? And there's, there's no bit there. All of a sudden they're showing up. That's kind of weird. Are you noticing, are you noticing anything like that in your agency? I mean, just out of the ordinary stuff like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm out of the patrol loop. So I, I really don't have a finger on that pulse. You know, I just hear, you know, stuff on the, uh, the radio here and there. So I really couldn't, uh, right. comment it's it's been interesting i feel like we're 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 at a place where it it's teetering on the brink and one, it's something the next bad thing to happen if it if it's poorly timed could just tip it and i think mm-hmm. it's disappointing to be honest with you but whatever what, what that they're not that it's writing or that's happening <laughs> I was told I was told there would be zombies. I was told that we were going to have fun and we're not. Yeah, right? <laughs> like la- like la- last this is funny. Last night um my, my niece went out to get some food from a drive-through and 
the conversation was happening about, um, yeah, you know, maybe you should not me, her brother should go with her because, you know, they're having these follow homes. And I'm like, whoa, 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 let her go and let him follow her home. <laughs> yeah. Like, why is everybody jumping no. the gun here? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I, I like, you got to make, <laughs> say that What's again. That? Say just give us a heads up when you're pulling in. Right <laughs> yes, now. exactly. That's it. Just give a text. I'm pulling in. <laughs> I, you know, it's funny. I like they're they're kind of like uh, they're you know two kinds of people in this world. There are people that say, "Oh my God, you got to lock the door at night," and then there's people like me that go, "Oh no, come in." Oh yeah, the door is locked for your protection, not for mine. Mm. <laughs> Break in! I I fucking dare you. So we had a little non incident here. And uh, so the way our house is set up is we have a long driveway and we have a gate, right? Um, gate is open, closed, whatever. But, you know, anyway, at this time, the gate was closed and we had inform, you know, it was posted somewhere on, on um, uh, Facebook that there was uh, a group going around that were claiming they were part of the CDC and they were in. Um, I did see that. Yeah. yeah. And they were in white. They were in white like moon suits and they Legit, basically. Our dis- a dispatcher's ex-roommate got. 211 for because of those people okay yeah. so we see all this and we're like oh, for those of you who don't know a robbery, yeah, a robbery. robbery i'm like oh okay all right well that's you know just note well i think it was two days after that it's 8 30 at night and it was actually raining that night and we just hear honking 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 outside the house well like i said we have a long driveway and then a gate at the end honking 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 and so we finally get up and our gates closed and there's this white van that's pulled up right at the gate and there's two guys saying, open the gate, open the gate. Let's go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and as and it when they out, saw your smiling face. No, they didn't see absolutely me. Absolutely. Oh, no, no, no. They didn't see me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the point I'm making is we were like, oh, this is going to be awesome. Yeah. And at the end of the day, um, my wife is the one that was going to open the door. Right. And I was obviously somewhere else waiting for yeah. them to come up. It turned out to be a big nothing. But again, another disappointing thing. Yeah. You know, this was like, oh, they came to our house. This is awesome, right? <laughs> but anyway, uh, letdown. Huh? Total letdown. This is weak. The, yeah. <laughs> you know, where's where's the where's the you know where's the riots? Where's the home invasions? Yeah. Where's the well? They're, they're happening. They're happening. They're, the they home invasions happening. are happening. But not to me. Is what? <laughs> right. Yeah. No. I, 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 I. You know, we joke around about that. But I mean, there was a there's a you know something I saw. It was a meme that said. Uh, there's three response or four responses to to somebody or four kinds of people when somebody breaks into your house, and the first one was a picture of a dude with a you know cord- cordless phone calling nine one one. The second picture was a you know a baseball bat. The third picture was a twelve gauge shotgun, and the fourth picture was a can of Red Bull, a tomahawk, and some <laughs> night vision. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I realized, oh, I'm in category four. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> I still think the best one, I don't know why it was so simple was it, it it's literally it looks like a it looks like a special forces team like a group of four or five dudes going creeping up some dude's stairs and at the top it, it said me and the homies at 2 a.m. grocery shopping at the neighbor's house. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like that is so legit. You know, you never know. Maybe it could get to that point. Well, uh, uh, there's there's been this is this the one thing like uh, that I think would be a positive to come out of something like this is all the women that were uh, attracted to soft men. Oh, that, that was the other one. And now they're like, oh, the man bun ain't so sexy now. Mm-hmm. It's the it's the high and tight well, with the friction. Yeah. Yeah. What did it say? It's like women women are now realizing they need a man that can hunt, fish, and kill. Yeah, yeah. and now we're like skinny exactly. jeans. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, kidding aside, it'd be interesting, like these lines of people that are, that are at gun shops, uh, it'd be interesting to talk to them. Yeah, I, I'd be very curious, and, and this is on a totally serious note. I'd be very curious. It's like, okay, well, number one, what are you here to get? So, which means you don't have a gun. Right. That's why you're here to well, get a, a gun. A, well, I, legitimately, you're going to have people in line at the gun store that probably are like, you know, our good friend Robert. He's like, I got two guns. I got to go pick up. But there's probably yeah, but the, but a guy like Robert is not going to go wait in a three hour line to go pick up his gun. No, he's not because he, because he already has guns. Right. Yeah. But if you're the dumbass, so you got the dumbass who has guns but didn't buy enough ammo right yeah that's that's one guy right but i don't i don't know about that i think a lot of them are going to be i need a gun first time gun buyers right right and i'm curious to see well what well what flipped i mean why do you all of a sudden need a gun because i i you know i I take a 50 50 shot 
that you probably are against guns and against other people having guns in the whole Second Amendment. And, you know, you don't need an AR-15, you know, to go kill a deer and blah, 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 all that bullshit, right? Right. I'm curious, why are you going, why are you buying a gun now? Because you're not a hunter. You're not going to go take that nine millimeter out and decide you're going to, you know, take out elk. Right. So why? What? And what, what did you pick? You're going to have, a, you pick gonna have a shootout buy. with the Rona. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, buying a gun for coronavirus is like buying toilet paper for coronavirus. But what yeah. I'm getting you're at. You're buying the gun because of the people. Yeah. Right. Of and, and, and of this course. is why I think this is in a weird, twisted way. This might really. Change the wave a little bit it because might. a lot of people now feel insecure. Yeah. You know, all of these whack jobs like you and me and Robert and everybody else like, oh, they don't need 10 fucking guns. Okay. All yeah. Right, who's that's the whack fine. job now? Guess yeah. what? I have 10 guns and you got none. Right. All right. And now what's happening? Right. And it really hasn't even gotten bad. I've, I've heard people say, you know, oh, I don't need to prep. I, I don't need to, to, to have a supply of emergency food for an earthquake or, 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 or civil unrest or this or that or the other thing. I'll just go and take it from you and, or, or go and take it from the people that did prep. And I go, you have a fundamental misunderstanding yeah. of what people like me or people like us do or think or how. If you think for one second that your neighbor, who is a prepper, isn't ready and waiting for you to try and take his shit. You got another thing coming. Yeah, he's got a minefield, right? <laughs> his, he 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 quickly replaced the water in his sprinklers with gasoline. Yeah, exactly. I saw yeah. that one, dude. That was oh my gosh, that one's so good. I saw that one. That was funny. <laughs> oh, this is so fun. And, and you're right. There is a level of disappointment to to this apocalypse is off mm -hmm. to a really shitty start. What I've been training for? <laughs> what the hell? I mean. <laughs> I liked the ones that came out like like literally two days into it, and people were like, "So do we start dressing like Mad Max now, or right. when when does that happen? When do I get to put on my warlord costume and start and start putting spikes on my car?" <laughs> oh my goodness! Well, how are you dealing with it without being around your family? Is it are you getting to 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 FaceTime with them and stuff like that? And yeah. Yeah, you know, the, the other thing that sucks is I was, you know, kind of hoping to take the uh, the time that I have off. That we really don't even have that much overtime. I work a compressed schedule where I only work three days a week. And I was uh, hoping to, you know, get some stuff done around the house, but I can't even do that anymore. So You, you know, get just, stuff done around your condo. <laughs> <laughs> nothing to do here. <laughs> yeah, I, I had to make up things. To, to, so I didn't have to go and do all the things that my wife has been asking me to do for a long time, and that ran out within two days. So, so, mm -hmm. so overall, your the policies at your department haven't really changed much, then, right? I mean, it's kind of business as usual, right? Yes, yeah, it's, it's all business as usual. The fact Which that I, kind of mind blowing. Well, you know, there's other these. Uh, I know uh, from what I heard from some guys I know that work Riverside County Sheriff. Uh, their sheriff, he's actually pretty badass. You know, I've, I've watched a lot of his videos and stuff where he's talking about different issues. But uh, if uh, any of their deputies come in contact with somebody that's even suspected of having the coronavirus, they're quarantined. Which would make sense. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, well, and then uh, another one of my coworkers uh, has a, a family member that works uh, for Huntington Beach PD. And I'm not sure what their, their, uh, requirements are for quarantine but the city of huntington beach um they rented out the hotel because you know the hotels are all empty so if any of the first responders get uh you know quarantined and they can't quarantine because of family members then they pro they provide them a hotel room no shit wow yeah. wow that is a wow that's yeah, pretty impressive that's called taking care of your people yeah, you know, wow. it's, it, you should start taking like articles or or, or anecdotes. Just start in anonymously forwarding those emails <laughs> to the administration of your department. And be like, hey, you know, I, I'm I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying, I, you know, this is how other people are doing it. Because yeah. that's that's legit. That's good. I'm guessing his administration doesn't give a shit. Well, no. most administration. That's the thing. In most, you're either your administration gives a shit. Or they don't. And mm -hmm. if they don't, you're never going to change that. And if they do, you just wait until they don't. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, we got we got two masks and some spray to spray your boots. 
<laughs> that's, that's it? That was that was your... Just in case you're going to lick your boots, you got to spray them first? Well, I guess they didn't want us to track anything into the into the station or whatever. But I mean, like... Shut the we, fuck up. But, but wait a minute, wait a minute. Who's touching the floor and then touching yeah, their the, face? What does that mean? I don't know. I don't make the rules. No, but I did they explain it? Like... All I know is that I walked in one day and there was a spray bottle by the floor. And you're like, yeah, that's a spray your boots. I'm like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did they get the memo that the five-second rule has been postponed? She can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, I don't know whose idea it was. I just thought it was quite interesting. But, I mean, they, they did put – um. Oh, I'm trying to think. What, what are they, we have, like, these gnarly, like, face masks, like, the actually, like, full shield, like, plastic face mask thing, like, gowns. And stuff. I mean, I don't know when we'd use it, but I mean, it's they, they outfitted the cars with all this stuff. Yeah, when are you supposed to use it? I don't know. And then what? I don't. I don't really know when we're supposed to use. It. I mean, I guess maybe if we went to a medical call or I don't know. But I'll tell you what. I have been using. I've been using so many more spit masks. Right. So many more. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah. Someone just has an attitude. Oh, spit mask. Spit mask. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's interesting too. Is um, have you guys seen the articles that are talking about um? Or I guess the stuff that's coming out about certain government officials and or certain government entities that have depleted the stores of things previously and not replaced them. So, for example, California had a surplus of portable hospital cots and portable ventilators mm-hmm. up until recently when they dismantled them mm-hmm. and just. And, oh, we don't need these. Mm-hmm. And they dismantled them and got rid of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, the United States government had a supply, a stockpile of the, I think, N95 or whatever uh, masks. And then back when a certain uh, Barack Obama was president, we had a H1N1 bird flu, I think it was. or yeah. mm-hmm. And he depleted the entire And never restocked it. And never restocked it. Of course not. So in my house... If I use up all of something, I have to put it on the grocery list and we have to replenish it. Don't you usually it, go buy it? Right? Yeah, usually yeah. that's how it works. So yeah. somebody said something about replacing the mask. No? But, oh, okay. But wait a minute. But you cannot use a plastic straw. That's right. That shit is locked down. That's right. Right? There is no plastic straws. And if you need a syringe, you can get one. Yes. Yeah. So at least that's still we in should place. Start, we should just start drinking our drinks out of <laughs> syringes. Just yeah, might as well just mainline it. <laughs> yeah, just mainline it. <laughs> wow. So, uh, so ass Oh, this could go on forever. I but swear. you know what's it but the nice thing about like what you're saying, I think there's a lot of people gonna get their eyes open because of this. I hope so. I, I hope I, so. I, I really do hope so. I mean, are are you seeing Robert, are you seeing anybody that or or talking to anybody that you see is, is having a different like mindset change, even in your personal life, people you know that that are taking things a little more serious. Cause I know people I've talked to, they're looking at me going, okay, so what do I do? What do I, how do I, how do I handle this? And I'm going, Oh, sweet summer child. Let me tell you, <laughs> do you have a gun? <laughs> <laughs> Step one. <laughs> are you nah, most of the people, uh, you know, that I come in contact with in my personal life are pretty much kind of the same mindset that I am. So it's not, uh, I haven't seen any big swing changes in anybody's, uh, thought process or anything yeah well like i said i work in hollywood so i don't I, i'm around people who are not of my same mindset constantly mm. so i was hoping jr was going to be here he stood me up again because uh I've, I've heard of several things uh going on with lapd like uh somebody uh just told me what was it two days ago that uh 77th division was basically shut down because they had a big outbreak like nine officers and that the uh, downtown dispatch was shut down and they had to move everything up to the the valley because they had an outbreak at the dispatch center yeah yeah the dispatch center in downtown for lapd but no that's making the news so i don't know if it's true or not but that's you know the rumors that are going around i thought for sure if you're a troll that lives in central and south you'd be immune to this fucking disease yeah we've been saying that for a while you know they're talking about the homeless population but you gotta wonder I mean, you got to wonder. They might be bulletproof. <laughs> well, they've had everything. No, I, I mean, I really mean that. <laughs> they've had everything. They're just like... <laughs> I'm not saying it's not going to rip through the homeless population, but really, you got it's going to be interesting to see how mm-hmm. this plays out. Because you're not going to tell me that this is going to be rampant through the city of L.A. and you know the minority of people that get it are homeless. I mean, there's got to be a reason. Yeah. Because you would think that that would spread like wildfire. Well, I mean, if they're bringing back the, the bubonic plague, you would think... <laughs> 
if they can bring that back, yeah. They so can, yeah, well, the coronavirus is a bitch, right? <laughs> They're bringing back bubonic, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you keep your coronavirus. We've got the plague. <laughs> Oh, man. It's, it's going to be interesting. How it is, it is going to be interesting to see how this plays out. And I mean, I, I, it sounds very heartless, but when you, when you look at, look at ones and zeros and you, you do this job long enough, but firefighters, doctors, police officers, they're going to tell you, yeah, a mortality rate of 1%, even a full 1%, not what they're talking about, you know, one, they were at one point talking about 3%. They were at one point, they were talking about 1.4%. Mm. Even a, Population decimation of one percent, one and a half percent globally, is a drop in the bucket. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. a drop in the bucket. My wife, you know, she always gives me shit. Like when the tsunami happens, I'm like, well, I mean, you know, they did kind of build a resort on a beach, and the natives build their huts three miles inland because they know that shit happens mm -hmm. there. You right. know, so you buy the ticket, you take the ride. A uh, hundred thousand people die in a tsunami. That's it's it's tragic on a personal individual level, but sure. at the same time, it's not going to end humanity. Right. He, he, there are way way more people. You could literally lose fifty percent of the world's population, and humanity would still go on. Yeah, and you know all these statistics that they're you know putting on TV is so. I mean, it's going to be interesting to hear the doctor next. Yes, but statistically, and again, I don't know. I'm not a doctor, and I don't know shit. But I can add two and two, and what. Floats well, in my head, me, right? Can't. What floats in my head is, look, if you can't gauge, if you can't test how many people have already had it and have moved on with life, then how do you know the percentage of well, how effective it not is? Not even can't. They're being selective on who they're checking. Right. So, so you, can't, you, you can't have a number until you actually know. You can't just test people that are coming in positive or negative at the hospital. You have to test everybody. What about the population that might have already had it in November and December, and they have the antibodies for it now? Yeah. Well, that's going to that's going to change the percentage from, like you said, one percent to maybe you know point oh one percent. Right. Yeah. So we don't know this, but yet, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know. I think a lot of people got caught with their pants down. But well, and I mean, I don't know about you guys. Well, I do know about you guys, but. Uh, I don't think that this is the end. Like, no, if, if I no. if I die on this planet, if, if I die on the Earth, you know, my consciousness will go somewhere, and uh, it's not the end of things. So, you know, hey, life is temporary. That was there was this was never a <laughs> life is a fatal disease anyway. So we were never promised anything. Let's make the best of it, and don't freak out, and don't panic, and don't give in to fear. You know, be prepared for the worst. Mm -hmm. Hope for the best. And fill your sprinklers with gasoline. Mm -hmm. And that's why is this whole thing is disappointing right now. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> oh, man. So uh, I think the, the takeaway from all this is just going to be we won't know. Well, first of all, the apocalypse is off to a terrible start. Yeah, um, clearly. This, yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's like going to an orgy and they're all ugly chicks. It's just a non-starter. Um, we're not going to know the true, I think, fallout from this for what? Years, years. Yeah, I would say. I mean, we'll know we'll know some some temporary fallout in the next six months, but the true like effect, like nine eleven had a had a mind shift, you know, effect on the population. This is going to do but for then, two weeks. Yeah, I was going to say, but then how long did that last? Yeah, it didn't last. Yeah, that, that was fleeting. No, but it, it, I think the lasting effect was on the kids, right? Because the kids that shaped their entire worldview. It's not the adults; it's the kids. And I think this is going to shape. Like, for example, me growing up, I grew up in you know the seventies and eighties, and that was I was afraid Russia was going to nuke us at any second. You know, because it was always nuclear disarmament, nuclear disarmament, nuclear disarmament, and the third Friday and, of every month at two o'clock in the afternoon, the sirens go off. Yeah, remember that? Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. And, yeah, under your desk. Yeah, yeah under your and, desk. Yeah, and and so, you know, we I I watched Red Dawn as a kid, and I thought that was a genuine possibility. <laughs> and, yeah, I hear you. I, I thought that. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh my gosh, and you don't realize like the the odds of that successfully happening to the United States is you know slim and none, and Slim just left town. But as a kid, you don't understand that. So that shaped. Uh, it, to some degree, how I want to be prepared now. So I'm curious to see if you've got 
four, five, six, seven, eight, ten year old kids that remember, oh my gosh, I remember we couldn't go to school. I remember we couldn't get bread. I remember we couldn't get toilet paper. Mm -hmm. This is going to A, freak them out and B, shape their worldview for the rest of their life. You want to get freaked out? You want me to send everybody into a tailspin right now? Yeah, I run it. Okay. Run that shit. Look at look up something called Q, the letter Q. Uh huh. Anon. Oh, a- QAnon. Oh, yeah. yeah. Q A N O N. Yeah. No, no. I'm putting. I know you guys know. Oh, okay. I'm just putting it out there. So okay. you want people oh. to go down the rabbit hole? Oh, yeah. Look yeah, up right? Q Anon. A N O N. Q Anon. Good yeah. luck. <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you, <laughs> enjoy wh- the rabbit hole. <laughs> whether you believe it or whether you don't believe it, it is right. a rabbit hole. Right. It is a vortex of holy crap. What the hell? And if they're and if they're ten percent right, we're fucked. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. <laughs> And, and, you know, I mean, when you look at somebody like Alex Jones, right? Infowars, right? If if you don't know who Alex Jones is and you don't know who Infowars is, again, have fun with that rabbit hole. But as much as I uh, laugh at Alex Jones, even a broken clock is right twice a day. All right. Right. If, even if a little little of it is true, it's mm-hmm. like, hmm. And he's a guy. So again, you want to get you want to get freaky weird. Look up Bohemian Grove. If you don't know what Bohemian Grove is, it will scare the shit out of you. Ooh, I'm gonna have to look that up. It's yeah, in California. It is in California. It is a retreat where once a year, the most powerful men in the world go for an entire week to hang out together. And the compound is locked down. And Alex Jones, before he was a nut bar, he was a quasi-investigative journalist. He broke in during their week-long thing and got undercover video of what this big... I mean, there's a giant owl that speaks. And at one point, the, the voice of the owl was provided by Walter Cronkite. This is the kind of level... Like, we're talking presidents. Oh, and, so it kind of goes with the QAnon stuff. A little bit. Oh, yeah. And they, That's interesting. The the debauchery and the, the it, it's yeah look up Bohemian Grove. So what was interesting is then I watched a. Um, it kind of sounds like Epstein Island. It it's kind of it, it actually it does seems like it kind of is like that. I, I believe there's there's some truth underlying. All oh that. yeah. Well, why did Epstein have like a a gold domed blue and white striped temple? Right. And, no, 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 I believe that's true. And, I'm saying I believe it goes deeper. Than oh, that. I, th- I think yeah. so too. I really do believe that. Yeah. And, uh, when you, when you look at, you can look up the video footage from Alex Jones of that he snuck out of Bohemian Grove. Well, years and years and years later, there was a show where, um, it was like America's book of secrets revealed or whatever. And there was some author who paid these journalists, like a team, it was like Mythbusters, but for conspiracy theories. And these people went to Bohemian Grove and they rented a boat cause it's on a, it's, it's on a river. There's a dock and they rented a boat and they pulled up to the dock and they got off the boat and walked up the hill onto the property. Now, it wasn't during the time that this whole retreat was going on. It's during the time when the property is like empty the rest of the year. But there were still armed guards. They still got confronted. They got arrested and they threatened to charge them with like everything in the book that they could. And then they had to sign an NDA and they had to... Not, the footage couldn't be air. I mean it was a big deal so some shit some shit is true some shit's true there's a truth somewhere so yeah I agree. and I and I, I sound like a goddamn conspiracy nut when mm-hmm. I say it but you, you know come on use your head I, I won't even say what I read this morning I'm just saying some well, of this stuff is like you crazy oh, no yeah. no I'm just saying there's just so much crazy shit that's going on in that group yeah. I mean stuff that you normally would not even think of, right? Yeah. You just you just look at this you look at this picture of yeah. something and you're like, oh, okay. And then all of a sudden someone has a whole different take on him, like, what the fuck? I didn't see that. Yeah. It's 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 when, out in right field. Ugh. But maybe not. Well that's the that's the other thing too, is because there's so much of it, you don't know how like when you've reached the bottom of the rabbit hole, what was true and what wasn't. No, but you know what? Some of these folios on QAnon were talking about this happening two years ago. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. What the hell? Yeah. Well, it, it, how how many of those things where they release a you see a book and it says in you know yeah. it's a fiction novel. I know. How about supposedly, this? has The Simpsons ever been wrong? <laughs> <laughs> ever. <laughs> oh lord. I'm just saying. Well, 
Well, all right, Robert. I I, I wish you the best. Don't get sick. <laughs> yeah, I'll try not to. Uh, and uh, you know, somehow you got to convince uh, convince them that the policy of hey, if you've been exposed, uh, you can still go to work. <laughs> it's probably a bad idea. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you on that. Well, I think we'll, we'll, I think you should demand some boot spray. <laughs> the problem solver right there. Is... Yeah, we can forget about world peace. The boot but they, spray. But they did issue us hand sanitizer. Really? Oh, well. You're a rich man. Damn, man. you could sell that shit on yes, uh, eBay. Shit, gold. <laughs> Here, that's liquid gold. The price of... Just, just one bottle, though. Oh. The price of hand sanitizer is higher than the price of gold and oil combined. Dude, you could split that into like 20 parts. And sell it all on eBay. Not like I work dope or anything, but just so you know, <laughs> I will say the the amount of uh, companies there's like a, there's distilleries that are switching oh, yeah. from whiskey mm-hmm. to hand sanitizer production, which I, I, that's pretty cool. Like the the kind of like people, you can make your own though, you know that right? right? You can totally make your it's own alcohol that's, and aloe vera, and you got hand sanitizer. That's right. <laughs> well, I I used to do this trick because if you don't know, and okay, have fun with this, boys and girls. Hand sanitizer is Ethyl mm-hmm. alcohol. It's not methyl alcohol. You were the it's guy not, that lit your hand on fire. That's propyl alcohol. That it's was ethyl. Charlie. Oh, no, no, he lit his e- body on fire. Yeah. That's well, true. ethyl alcohol is the drinkable kind, right? And if you look here, I've got it. We've got Germex right here, and it says drug facts, active ingredients, sixty-two percent ethyl alcohol. Well, ethyl alcohol is the good kind. It's the drinkable kind. So that bottle, Jello of, shot, right? That <laughs> bottle of hand sanitizer is one hundred and twenty-four proof. Right. See, the proof is half of half of the half. proof is the percentage. Right. So if it's sixty two percent, it's one hundred twenty four proof. You can take hand sanitizer, squeeze it into a cup, sprinkle a little table salt in it, and stir it up. The table salt will take the gel and congeal it, and you can scoop it out with a spoon. And what you're left with is Everclear. Is Everclear. <laughs> it's moonshine. And that's awesome. It makes... I'm going to show all the tweakers this <laughs> in my. <laughs> well, so so do you know where this came from? Some tweaker jail. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. This was this this became this is what Pruno Pruno went bye bye. Well, it didn't go bye bye, but when when inmates figured out they could take the table salt and the hand sanitizer and do shots, they were all over it. That's legit. Wow. Yeah. So enjoy that one. If you can if you can reverse engineer hand sanitizer into booze, you can engineer booze into hand sanitizer. So okay. just go to. Go to the liquor store and buy some 151 mm-hmm. and some aloe vera. And that's it. You got <laughs> hand sanitizer. <laughs> Sir, do you know why I pulled you over? No, officer. I, I think you're drunk. No, no, it's just hand sanitizer. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Well, um, do you guys have anything, Robert? Any closing thoughts but, uh, other than trying to stay safe and sane? And... No, you know, I just wish people would... Uh take it a little bit more seriously and, uh, you know, maybe stay home since we're trying to curb it a little bit. And, but you know, people are people, they're going to do what they want. Well, and here's the thing. If don't be half ass about it, I was just either, about to say either, either open everything up and let everybody get it. And who dies, dies. And who doesn't, doesn't. Or if we're going to do the quarantine, then shut the fuck up and stay home. Mm-hmm. And let us enforce it. And yeah, let us. One of the two. This half-ass bullshit is stupid. Yeah. It's like medical marijuana when everybody's like, "Oh no, I have a prescription." No, just fucking legalize it, which they finally did. Mm-hmm. You know, it was stupid. So I, I think you're right. Take it seriously. Stay home. Hey, hey, enjoy the time. Teach your kids to teach your kids to draw. Teach you know, teach your teach your son to cook. Teach your you know daughter to sew. Teach if did you, you know see how to that, do that stupid stuff. puzzle on the table in there. It's, yeah, how many pieces is that puzzle? A lot. A thousand? No. That's way more than No, it's way more, it way more than that. It's like 5,000, I think. Yeah, there you go. I so, don't know, but that's a nightmare. Yeah, and, and turn off the damn TV. You know? Turn off the damn TV and go do something fun. What is it? I think right when, real quick, right when this thing started, when I actually I came here. I don't, I don't know why I came here. I think it was before work. I because it's a my, beautiful, gorgeous compound. Yeah. With, and um, I just remember like, driving, and I was like, wow, it's it's so bright outside. And I'm like, wow, everyone's holding hands and walking dogs. And I'm like, yeah, this is how it used to be. I forgot it was <laughs> like this. Back in the old days <laughs> before freaking everybody was staring at these little screens in their hand. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right, Elliot, you have anything? No. Um, I'm John? Good. No. Okay. Good to nice uh, to see you, Robert. Yeah. It is nice to see you. We, we, Glad we can keep you some company. Right. For a little bit. Thank you. <laughs> 
Although it was seven o'clock in the morning. Ugh. Yeah, I know. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no shit. That was my bad. Yeah, with all the uh, with all the bad news out there, I think we can we we're gonna skip a dedication on this episode just because we don't want to bring the mood down. We had so much fun talking about the the apocalypse and and people, you know, let's get this apocalypse going. This is this is terrible. You know, I, I want to put. I can't wait to like put like a cow catcher and spikes on my tires and right. paint, paint it rusty brown and start wearing a cod piece uh, and shoulder pads and loudspeakers. Loud welcome speakers, to the jungle. Welcome, yeah. Den- oh God. Yeah. If you follow QAnon April 1st, stand by. sweet. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and Google QAnon and Google Bohemian Grove. Stand by. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we should change our sign off from uh, come home with your children on it to Epstein didn't kill himself. <laughs> But he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so I hope you've enjoyed. We tried to. We didn't want to bring everything down too much. We tried to lighten the mood and talk and, and talk to our good buddy Robert when we found out because he was going to come in and Jr. was going to come in and we were going to do legit war stories. And then poor Robert got freaking self quarantined so that it, he couldn't be around us. He couldn't be around. You can't even be around yourself, can you? No. <laughs> <laughs> So until our next episode, wish Robert uh, some good vibes and get well and uh, come home with your shield or on it. 